driving it. It's the only footage we'll ever have of me driving the bus. Okay, it would. So back here by, I don't even know what to call it, this back section that lifts up into our engine. It's in our engine compartment, thank you. Um, don't pull it down because it's adhered. Basically we have, okay, we have overlapping metal, right? And bolts. So that part of the floor is higher up than the rest of the floor. Um, and so if it was just a cosmetic issue, we would kind of just move on, but we're worried the floor is gonna bow. Um, so Shane thought of something we can do for that. So last night when we dry fit our piece of wood, um, it fit, however, it did bow up here. So basically we're just gonna measure this distance um, and then around, come down two inches. So this 34 inches will come down two inches and we'll go across 16 inches to get to the edge here. And then um, this is about a half inch in height. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of cut a notch, not a whole piece out of the wood, we'll just kind of notch it out. So then when this comes through, we're able to lay the wood down, the wood will still cover it, but it'll slide up over that um, little bump there. Because it the depth, it won't be as deep, so it'll, yeah. it'll like, so we have lay on top. So it's three-quarter plywood and we'll cut it down. Um, so it'll make it about a quarter inch just over this section. So, and with, it, it should be strong enough still. And besides, we're gonna have some stairs going there. It's just to help the floor actually lay a little flatter. So sorry about the shadow, but what I did is I cut along here, cut this side, and then just scored it all the way through. And then we'll just take a chisel and we'll just kind of pop all these out. Um, that'll create our little gap for those bolts to sit into. Any tips or tricks? Go, so go this way. Go. Oh, it's okay. Go what way? Oh. Go into it this way. And then just pop it out. Because it should be right at where that board is pressed together. So it okay. should pop out fairly easy. It's basically like pulling out the walls again. And you might have to come down at the same side. That's fine, I like that. So then it'll just kind of come out in little pieces like that, but it'll leave a relatively um, smooth and stable surface. All right, so we finished notching this out. This is the end result see it's kind of got that little lip right here um, and that's where the screws will sit when we put this piece back in the bus. Somehow end up underneath this covered in glue. <laughs> I'm so scared. You, you just laugh. I'm serious. Tell me what our plan is. We're lifting, here. we're setting, we're sliding. Okay. 
We're, so it's okay gonna, if we're not perfectly lined up initially. Yeah, but we want to be super close because we don't want to slide all this glue off. Okay. Oh. Ready? Yeah, I mean, I guess. What, why are you holding? You got to switch that hand because we're trying to lay it down. I will. I'll back up. What, what do you suggest I do, honey? I'm I'm a midget and I need Turn to... Turn this hand over the top. I can't lift it with my thumb and back. finger. Lean it back. What world do you live in? Ready? Yeah. Okay, there. You're so much bigger than me. So we're adding in another piece here, and uh, again, we have to cut a seam on the edge, kind of like we did in the back. So I measured from the back um, 17 and a half inches. We cut this one at 17 and a half inches. However, you know, being buses, since nothing is ever square um, or easy, uh, we're going to have to probably trim off another quarter of an inch. Um, so it's just kind of one of those quirks about um, building on a bus. You just got to kind of roll with it.
We are actively working on our floor here and, <clears throat> excuse me, we have three of our huge four by eight pieces of plywood down. And because of how the bus floor is, it's a little wonky. Some of them are going down really well and the weight we put on them is enough to, you know, kind of seal them down and make them not, you know, I don't, I don't even know how to say what I'm saying, basically to secure them to the ground. Um, so we're thinking that long-term, once we have all these in, we may need to get some screws and go ahead or bolts, or I don't know the correct term, Shane will correct me, I'm sure. But basically what was used for the seats um, in the bus initially is what we might have to put in the corners of all of these big pieces of wood when we're completely done. And then we'll just get the kind of screws that kind of set into the wood a little bit. And then um, we can just fill it with wood putty, um, sand and stain um, how we had planned on doing it. What we're realizing part of the problem was, was when we were pulling out the screws that were um, not coming out when we pulled out the seats and um, the floor and all that, Shane took a crowbar and was, you know, ripping them out with force and that kind of pulled up the sheet metal and kind of made it bubble a little bit for lack of a better term. But um, so hindsight, if we ever did another bus, would we pull them out with a, a crowbar? No, no, we would not. But you know, here we are. And also it's funny, everyone says this, you know, the measurements, like you, you measure things a million times and things still just are kind of weird with how they line up and are just a little bit off because it's a bus. So, um, everything's going fine. It just, all the little quirky problems that you run into and finding solutions around it. And it just, you know, is what it is. Um, Shane's currently bringing in tubs of our son's Legos to weigh down this, uh, wood because somehow Legos are the heaviest thing we have inside our home. That tells you something. Four containers.